On November 18, 1929, a severe earthquake shook the Grand Banks off Newfoundland. Thirteen international telegraph cables were torn apart. At that time, the cable breaks were attributed to the earthquake. However, a study of these breaks by Dr. Bruce Heason of the Lamont Doherty Geological Observatory revealed a different cause. After this earthquake, 13 submarine cables that linked the United States with Europe were broken. For a distance of 600 miles to the south, one cable after another broke along a 200 mile length until at 13 hours and 17 minutes after the earthquake, the last cable broke. What had happened? It was our hypothesis, the same thing had happened in 1929 to produce these sand beds, namely a suspension of mud and water known as a turbidity current, which flowed at tremendous velocities downslope, carrying down these big loads of sediment. But how to prove it? Well, the obvious way was to find if similar deposits were found south of the Grand Banks as we had already found in the Hudson Canyon. So a couple years later, we were able to get a ship and go out and take a core, a series of cores, in fact, of which this is representative. And these cores showed an upper layer about a meter thick of silt and sand and then an abrupt break and ooze below, the ooze of the same kind that Challenger Expedition had described in the late part of the 19th century. We had the evidence from the cores. We had the analogy with the other canyons. And geological theory at that point was ripe. So a revolution in thinking was born. And from then on, there was really no doubt that the great abyssal plains, they were formed by these floodings of silt and sand, the uh, result of the turbidity current. Turbidity currents can roll on for hundreds of miles, spreading out thick new layers of sediment as they lose momentum. Between brief episodes of turbidity current sedimentation, the slow, steady rain of pelagic sediment continues unabated. This immense wedge of sediment at the foot of the slope is the continental rise, 